I've been involved with the historical shipwreck recovery business for the last 45 years. I started out with my father. My father was one of the grandfathers of treasure salvage. My dad did a TV show with Merv Griffin, and my dad was one of the guests, and Gordon was one of the guests. The highlight of the evening for me was the fact that Gordon was there. And when the show ended, when my dad introduced me to him, and I just went, That's a, that guy is like, he was in space. Thanks to my dad, I was able to spend a lot of time with Gordon. And in my 30s, we shared an office together. We were both explorers, and we formed this bond. I miss him dearly. <laughs> One day before he passed away, Gordon came to me and he said, Daryl, I need to talk with you for a second. I haven't shared this with anybody. And he pulls a big file out of his desk and he hands it to me and he says, I need to tell you something. Daryl is go, Austin is go. Roger, you're looking beautiful. There's something else down there, but it's in shallow reefs shallow water it could be only one other thing he knew that was the thoroughfare of the spanish during the colonial period it had to be a shipwreck that's when he realized that every single time he went over that area i'm going to write every single anomaly that i find and i'm going to take these readings and i'm going to investigate them later can i stand yeah just you do. people would kill for this This is it. This is what he gave me. That's what this is all about. Charts, coffee stained charts of wreck sites. Gordon's NASA files, top secret documents, which is really cool. You got the list of wreck sites, the dates, the names that Gordon hand wrote himself. He's done all the homework, every last detail. The Capitana, San Cristobal, the Louis the First. This is how detailed Gordon was. Two cannons, 25 feet deep, two anchors, 1643, 1551, 1724, 1758, and the list goes on and on and on. I've got 14 wreck sites in one small area. You guys are going to block that out, right? Yes. <laughs> As a treasure hunter, I can tell you in the last 40 years, there are wrecks that have been found that are worth billions of dollars. The Santa Margarita, 1715 fleet, the Atocha, the SS Mercedes. But there are more than 3 million shipwrecks that are still out there. And I believe that each of Gordon's documents is a clue that's going to lead me to shipwrecks all around the world. Mexico, Honduras, Turks and Caicos, Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, Venezuela. But I don't have everything. What I do have are letters, hand-drawn illustrations of shipwreck sites. In some cases, I have an exact list of what was on board. Over 150 wrecks. This one wreck site right here, which would be well over $500 million, just what? It sounds crazy, but it's a treasure map from space. One of the most difficult things about treasure hunting is getting people to believe in your project, getting people to believe in you. So this trip to Mexico is all about proof. I need proof that these documents actually lead to shipwrecks.
Steve's one of my best friends. Hola, Capitan. It's me socio, Steve. And he happens to be one of the best divers in the world. The reason Gordon loved Mexico so much was the fact the most valuable coins were minted in Mexico. He knew during the height of the colonial period that the Spanish were going into Mexico City, leaving there with tons of silver and gold, and ships were sinking by the hundreds. I'm really fortunate that Gordon did take such meticulous notes. He had written a few notes down about a trip that he took to Mexico, and can I see? Yeah. I'd love to show you, actually. This is pretty cool. And this is one of many. On June 14, 1969, a uh, group parted for Mexico to look for two treasure wreck sites. On June 17, 1969, he had heard stories of the Indians and Spanish galleons and how they sank with a lot of gold in a canal only 12 kilometers south of where we were on the beach. So he's very specific on his notes. Dived on wreck, but found it was a modern one. Explored the reef, and it looks promising. ships that are three or four hundred years old that were built out of wood. So when they sink, they'd settle on the ocean floor. Over centuries, all the wood decays, and the only remains are anything made of metal, anchor, cannons, ship hardware, gold, and silver. Now we can use this as a reference. That's one down. <laughs> 